afternoon, everyone. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus here. So thank you for uh, bearing with us, but we're back. I'm so confused. Is it Monday? I know. <laughs> so we're off schedule, not only by a couple of uh, episodes, but also um, it's a Thursday, not a Monday. And yeah. frankly, <laughs> we've been having construction here at the office and lots of conflicts. So... But we're here, so and we're glad that you're here also with us. Um, today we're going to talk about rodents and your business, which I'm sure is just a fascinating topic. <laughs> <laughs> but Depends on your, your perspective, I guess, right? <laughs> for us, especially. But, I mean, as business owners, you might not even thought about what kind of impact rodents might have or, you know, you even really thought about them at all, so... Probably not. Something yeah. that most people don't think about and probably prefer not to think about. Right. Yes, out of sight, out of mind. But, yeah. but here are some things that we can uh, discuss that you'll, you'll definitely want to know. And you are welcome to ask your own questions as well. We do encourage that. And uh, if you have want to look uh, into our services further, have additional questions, I highly recommend you check out our website, which is modernpest.com. And we will continue to attempt to try to do to our <laughs> normally scheduled Facebook lives, which are typically every other Monday at noon. So tune in. You can go ahead and get um, notifications when you uh, follow our Facebook live feed. So please follow us and share, like and share. We like that too. So if you do that, we're much appreciated. We'll give you the thumbs up. Wait, they're not seeing you doing yes, the thumbs up. Right. You're on the back side of the camera, that's Danielle. Right. Thank you. Good job. Good job. You got the cue. So, yeah, chime in with your questions, folks. And for now, I'm going to get started and at, with my own questions for Mike. Uh, just to get, to get us the juices flowing here, describe how commercial pest control is different from, like, a residential pest control service. Um... I guess I would say a big piece of that is the frequency of service with commercial business. It's usually a much more often service frequency, uh, you know, a more, um, more regularly scheduled. I mean, we do a lot of residential work that is quarterly where most of our commercial business is a minimum of monthly. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the type of facility, the pest pressure and thresholds and a variety of things. We have some that we do twice a month, some that we do weekly, some that, we, some that we're actually at every single day. So can you maybe describe the different types of businesses that would need a daily versus a weekly versus a monthly and why? It really depends a lot on the history, you know, the pest pressure. Um, Certainly food handling, food processing type of facilities, uh, you know, a large food plant typically would require a more, uh, a more frequent service than your local pizza place or variety store down the street. Mm -hmm. um, Why is that? A lot of that is just based on size. Um, the potential, you, you have to look at, you know, the larger a building is, the more likely that there's going to be places where, where pests can find their ways to get inside. Um, just the more amount of product that's being shipped in and out. Mm -hmm. There's just, you know, with a, with a large food plant or a distribution center or places like that with, you know, some of these places have, you know, 20, 50 overhead doors that are open and closed all day long. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes left open. Um, there's just a lot more potential in some of those larger facilities for for pests to enter to, to enter, and of course, you know, if you're talking food processing or healthcare or or you know um, things like that, we have some large hospitals that we service multiple times a week. Uh, you know, their thresholds of what is acceptable is is uh, very very small. So, so it, it may not necessarily mean there are current issues there, but they're preventative. Is that what you're saying? In many cases, yes, yes. It's just, you know, again, their thresholds, their tolerance of what they can accept 
for rodent activity or insect activity in in a, you know like a, in a healthcare facility or a food processing plant or food distribution is not that any place that's handling food in particular should have pest issues, but it's just their tolerance of what they can tol- what they can allow to have in those places is just so small that you really have to stay on top of it. And a lot of that is preventive. It's monitoring. It's making sure that there isn't problems. It's identifying problems when they first start to occur so they can be resolved in a very timely manner so that it doesn't become, you know, a, a much larger issue for them. You know, in a food processing plant, if they have a, if, if they have a pest infestation, potentially it could subject them to having products being recalled, which is just an absolute nightmare and a huge expense. Mm-hmm. So that's just a, it's just a very critical part of their operations. Mm-hmm. Some other types of businesses besides food processing, just to give people, uh, business owners in general, sure. a sense of like, how does this apply to me? Because I'm not a food processing plant. Yeah. So like, I'm an office building, or sure. I'm, a, you know, I have um, just a small business. It could be, you know, um, a small office or a small um, other type of. Small business, I guess. I can't think of something sure. particular, yeah. but I'm sure you can. Yeah, but you know, even like with an office type setting where you don't think of pest really being a problem, um, you know, you don't have a lot of food, you don't have, you know, a lot of what people would, what we would look at and say are conditions that are conducive for pest. Um, you think about the biology of rodents and, and, their, and their senses, what they're really you know, they're really their most de- developed, their keenest sense is, is a sense of smell, which obviously draws them to food. But they're also very sensitive to temperature changes. So they're attracted to buildings because, because of warmth. Mm-hmm. And of course, we're talking about rodents today, but, you know, um, in an office type setting, people coming and going, you just have a lot of activity. There's always potential with, you know, for having other types of pests as well. Mm-hmm. So. So let's dig into the topic of rodents in particular a little bit further. Like, so what kind of rodents are there in New England, and why would now be a time of year that we would be talking about rodents post? Most, most, most common rodents, and there are many, many different types of rodents, but the most common, what, what are considered, considered to be commensal rodents, and commensal basically means that it means that they eat at man's table without, without bringing any benefits. So they're really, mm-hmm. they're really scavengers. Um, the, the most common ones are house mice, um, field mice, deer mice, you know, those types of mice, and Norway rats um, are, the, are the most common. Mm-hmm. And there are plenty of them out there. The last couple years, I would say, We've seen huge increases in um, in rodent activity, but particularly with rats, mm-hmm. um, just places that are just absolutely um, just overrun with with rat populations around around the outside of facilities as well as in some situations with them inside, where it's just been just massive, massive populations. Is that particularly in cities, in, or can you find that in? in you can actually find you cities? can actually you can actually find that in in uh, anywhere. It's probably you know I guess we probably think of it as being more common in in the bigger cities, mm-hmm. in cities like Portland, in Boston, in Manchester, New Hampshire, and uh, you know Bangor, Maine. But um, We've seen really bad air, bad rat issues in much smaller communities um, in the um, northern part of Massachusetts. I won't name the town, but one that had a huge that had a uh, place that had a huge rat problem. Um, I've seen it in a small community in central Maine where several times where there's just you know relatively rural areas and there are just you know hundreds, literally hundreds of rats. So, and so that's those quote unquote conducive conditions that really help them thrive in those areas. Yeah, that's when you you know the more conducive the conditions are, the more harvest. You know, um, rodents like people basically need three things in order to survive. They need food, water, and shelter. Mm-hmm. Same thing, same basic things that we need in order to in order to survive. So, 
the more food sources there are around, the easier it is for them to find opportunity to, to, to gain shelter, uh, you know, and, and water supplies. Although with mice, water isn't really that critical because mice can actually live their entire life without ever drinking any freestanding water. They will, they will if it's available, but they can, they can eat something as dry as flour and get enough moisture from something like that that you think of as being totally dry. Uh, to survive their entire life without, with, without any other food source, without any other water source, I should say. Wow. So it's um, one of those things you don't think of when you know you ha might have a, a rodent issue that the conditions around your your home or property or your facility, you know, they don't seem conducive because maybe they don't have lots of water, but they right. can still be. Right. And a lot of it, again, it's, you know, especially at this time of year, you know, the nights are getting cooler. Um, they're, looking to, they're looking for a place to get inside where it's warmer. Um, so, you know, and a mouse can go through an opening basically the size of a dime. Uh, it's an easy way for people to perceive that, you know. Um, if, you can take, if you can take a number two pencil and put it through a hole, a mouse can get through that hole. And it only takes something about the size of uh, the, the the size of a nickel for a rat to get in. It's nickel to a quarter, you know, that size, a quarter inch or less. So. And so th that's when buttoning up your facility or your office or even you know whatever buildings you know are experiencing issues is so important. Yeah, um, you know, and one of the things that we do is that we're looking for we're looking when we come to your to to you home, your business, whatever the case is, we're looking for those conducive conditions. We're inspecting and looking for those conducive conditions and for areas where there, where there is an opportunity for the rodents to get in. You know, as part of an integrated pest management program, we don't want to just eliminate the rodents that are there. We want to work with, with our clients to help prevent them from having future ongoing problems by doing those inspections, identifying those areas where exclusion would be beneficial to help keep the rodents from getting in. So that's basically how they're getting into your business, is they're finding those tiny cracks and crevices. And I mean, can they, can it be up high or is it down? Oh yeah, no, it can be, it can be, it, it can be anywhere on, it can be anywhere on a structure. It can be, you know, I've seen, I, I've seen videos of uh, mice, rats running up the, running up the outside wall of a 10, 20, 30 story mm -hmm. building. Um, so it's not necessarily always at, at ground level. Um, it's not uncommon to find, you know, rodent activity in, in attics of buildings, places like that uh, is actually very common. And sometimes they're coming in closer to the ground level and going up through the walls and getting into those areas where it's quiet and sheltered and they're protected mm -hmm. to nest in those areas. Sometimes they're going up the side of the building and, and going in through a little, a little gap around an eave or you know, a soffit vent that isn't sealed tightly or, or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, when you think about the size of the what little bit of a gap they need, it's very difficult to make a building so tight that they can't possibly get in. And if they really want to get in bad enough, they'll just chew a hole and make their way in. We see that wow. with rat. We see that with... With uh, not so much with mice, they will do it some, but particularly with with rats and with wildlife, those types of things, um, it's not at all uncommon to find you know where they have chewed holes to get in. Well, that kind of leads me to the next question, or it's actually a perception that we hear from business owners, especially is I have a brand new building, why you know I don't need rodent control. The What's newer the building, problem? well. <laughs> Well, the newer the building, the tighter the building, the less likelihood of having rodents get in. Uh, but I've seen cases where rodents get into the building before the people ever moved in because the building is open during construction, uh, you know, so, so they get inside, get inside of a wall, a, a wall cavity or a space like that, and they're, they're there before the people are. Uh, the other part of that, too, is that even with a new building, I would, I would almost guarantee that I can find something for a gap somewhere, uh, you know, around utility lines, um, entrances for electrical services, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really common to see 
outside water spigots or lines for filling oil tanks and things like that where you've got a pipe, you know, this big around with a hole this big around it and they don't put an discussion plate over it to seal that and it leaves a gap. So, and then the warmth from that building or the odors from the building, you know, um, just are attractive to the are attractive to the rodents and they just, you know, mm -hmm. it's... They're continuously looking for food and harborage. It's, it's what they need to survive, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so then that kind of leads me to that next perception you hear too is, well, you know, my business, my office is really clean. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't need rodent control, you know, or pest control. And again, just like the tighter the business is, the tighter the structure is, the less, you know, the less conducive it is for them. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the less food you have around, the less attractive it, it is for them. But rodents, but rodents are basically they're omnivores. They they will find something to feed on, and you know a mouse eats a a very small amount of, of food in a day. A half an ounce of food they can survive on. So a little crumb that gets dropped in your break room, you know, very small amounts of of things like that. So even in office buildings, um, if I go out here and walk around this office and start opening people's desk drawers, how much food am I going to find? That snacks in my drawer. How much food am I go? How much food am I going to find? You know, the break room. The you know, yeah. in in probably most office offices, somebody's going to have food in their uh, in in their desk drawer, something for their snack, or you know that that type of thing. Um, it's just very very common to find those sorts of things. So even though you're not in you know, the big, huge food processing plant or a warehouse that is just packed with food from floor to ceiling right. with, you know, a million square feet. Um, or you're not in, you know, the grocery store, the little, the local convenience store, pizza shop or things like that where you think of there being food. Um, if there are, if you have a building that has people in it, you have food. Right. You have food. <laughs> We like to eat. Um, <laughs> it's just like the rodents do. What, yeah. It's one of the things that we need to survive. Yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's it's there. And so then you know, the other piece to that is you know, with that perception of like my my business is clean, I don't need it. Um, the other is uh, you know I hear is how how does pest control and rodent control help. Uh, your reputation management for your business. And doesn't it, doesn't yeah. having pest yeah. control do the opposite? Meaning it yeah, I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't think so. Um, you know, and I think that's kind of the old school perception was. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you only had pest control when you had a problem. Um, you're much better off to be having a service on a regular basis to help prevent you from having a problem and to identify if there is a problem so it can be resolved again. So you, the quicker you resolve it, the better. And as far as, you know, reputation management, the last thing any business wants is to, you know, have somebody walking through, it doesn't matter if it's your local store or your office building, um, you know, to have people have finding rodent droppings on their desk, uh, for somebody to walk in and see a mouse running down the hall or or scurrying around somewhere in a medical, you know, in a hospital or a medical type facility or things like that. You know, particularly with social media, mm -hmm. that stuff spreads like wildfire. And how does that affect your, how does that affect your, you know, the reputation of your business? How does that affect, you know, in an office setting, maybe you don't have, you know, a lot of public coming and going, but how does that affect employee morale? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And people don't people commonly don't realize, you know what these what these rodents are doing is you know I mean uh, they're leaving they're, they're leaving the signs where they have been there with drop-ins and urine and uh, potentially spreading spreading uh, you know um, things like 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 fleas or ticks um, and. Um, Diseases, salmonella, and all these different mm -hmm. things that they carry on their that they that they carry on their bodies that they may be spreading, you know, throughout throughout your business. How does that affect? How does that affect your uh, your employees or people that are that are visiting your business? I mean, so you are just so much better off to be proactive about this 
rather than waiting until you have a problem um, and, and, and then reacting to it. And reality, if you have a problem, um, you know, people may look at this as a budget thing and say, well, you know, I can save that X number of dollars a month or whatever it is. By not having pest control, I'll just wait until I have a problem. When that happens, you know, the and longer you go, the on. longer you go, the longer you go, well, yeah, certainly if it goes viral on social media, yeah. um, as happened with, uh, you know, with a large, large food chain maybe even 10 years ago with the videos of the rats running around in the, in the restaurant in New York City. Um, you know, how does that, how much does that cost you? How do you put a dollar value on, on right. potentially your lost revenue, you know? Um, and if you wait till you have the problem like that, you're, you're probably going to lose, you know, more product. What happens if you have, and, and not many of us have a lot of paper files anymore, but what happens if you have, you know, an office building, rodents love to gnaw. They get in there and start chewing on the wiring to your to, to your network. So if you do have paper files, they start chewing they start chewing stuff up. Um, you know, as you know, I've been doing this for a long time, Danielle. I know of of, of where there used to be a small local supermarket in in uh, Portland, Maine, um, where at night when they closed up at night, the owner would take a a, a bank bag, put the cash in it, and stick it into the ceiling. And the uh, and, and the mice were chewing it up on him. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, you hear you know just funny stories like that, which Over you know I, I should yeah. say odd stories. They're yeah. not really funny, but they're just you know, um, there's just so many potential impacts of having rodents inside inside your business or your or your home that people yeah. don't think about. You know, I mean, I don't know what the statistic is, but I think. I wish I could remember exactly, but I think they say something like 75% of fires of undetermined origin may be associated oh. with rodents, again, because they like to gnaw. They chew on things. They chew on wires. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the shape of a wire, the little, the long straight, you know, is for a rodent, that's the type of thing. Rodents primarily really like to feed on seeds. So... Those, those shapes of wires a lot of times just is something that is a naturally attracted to them because of that. And then, like and then yeah. yes, exactly. And it's the type of thing that they would naturally find in their, in their normal natural habitat if they were living outside. That's the type of thing that, that the wind blows it into their burrow outdoors. Yeah. That's what they were accustomed to feeding on. That's yeah. what, you know, so that just is very, attra- it's just very attractive for them. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, all the training, Bobby Corrigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's another question, and, and folks listening, feel free to chime in with your own, but what if my commercial building doesn't have any tenants? Do I still need pest control? Well, again, they're still going to be attracted to that building as a rule. I mean, not as much as an occupied building that is heated and has... And has you know, um, more of those conducive conditions, the water, the food, those sorts of things. But, but an empty building is extremely attractive for them just for the harborage, for the shelter that it provides to them. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, even in an empty building, even in an empty building, it's yeah. still a very wise idea um, to have somebody in there on a regular basis just looking for signs of, looking for signs of activity so it can be dealt with before it becomes a problem. Yeah, I would imagine too that like if you're looking to get that space occupied and then you end up having a rodent problem in you know, yeah, showing this to a potential tenant, client yeah. and they walk uh, a, a potential tenant and and they walk in and uh, you know start see, walking around looking actually. at that space and see a mouse run across the floor yeah. or or the mouse droppings in the corner somewhere or something like that. How is that going to impact? Yeah, how is that going to impact the uh, the market value of that of that mm-hmm. piece of real estate? So, yep. um, yeah, it's just a, you know, there's so many ways that that rodents could impact uh, mm-hmm. businesses like that. That you know, on the surface, people just don't don't really think about until they have that problem happen. Mm-hmm. So you know, we want to um, we want to help you to be proactive and prevent that from happening and. Right. 
and to protect, you know, not just the structure and the people that work in that structure and the food supply and, and all those things. But yeah, yeah, you know, we want to protect your, we want to help protect your, your business's reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to have, uh, you know, wants to have uh, a building that's infested with rodents and you're trying to find a tenant for it. Who, who wants to move into, who wants to move into there? Now, on the flip side, we talked about, like, you know, um, some food facilities and, you know, some office buildings and all those different kinds of businesses. But what about an audited facility? What what would modern or pest, you know, rodent control contribute to a facility like that? Well, just for clarification, because there may be people watching that don't necessarily understand what an audited facility mm -hmm. is. When you're talking audit facilities, you're talking typically th places that are pro producing you know, food product or distributing food product or, or medical related products, things of that nature. And, and, and clearly, you know, their threshold for pest is pretty much zero. You just can't have pest in those types of environments because of potential contamination and, mm -hmm. and, and all those things. So, you know, and especially under the Food Safety Modernization Act with food processing, food distribution, those types of things. The standards have gotten much stricter about what you need to do to make sure you don't have pest issues. Mm -hmm. um, so those types of facilities, really, what you're doing, we do an extensive amount of monitoring. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, obviously, we want to make sure you don't have a problem. But you need to be able to prove. You need to be able to prove to auditing companies and to, and to government agencies that you don't have a problem and that you will have a program in place to monitor that and make sure that you do not have a problem develop. Right. So. so if you are one of those facilities, then you can trust Modern to be able to handle that. We have been, um, we have, we have, we, we have mm -hmm. specialized to a degree in, in those types of services in those types of facilities for, mm -hmm. for many, many, many years. And, um, we have a very good reputation and uh, with, with the auditing companies, we know what their standards are. We stay up on, we stay up on top of those standards so that as they change, which they change every, every year at least, there's mm -hmm. some kinds of changes in what the, what the requirements are, um, particularly with the Food Safety Modernization Act. And it's just critical that you're dealing with somebody that knows those, those standards and, uh, knows how to meet those standards. I've sat across the table, like a table like this with people, from, with people before that have said, um, one particular meeting I remember quite a few years ago with a uh, business in Portland, Maine, that I sat across the table from one of the owners of the company and said, uh, if we do not get a good score on this audit, um, and the audit, you have to understand, pest management is a portion of the audit, and for most auditing, for, for most audits, pest management is 20% of your total overall audit score. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with, with businesses retaining or getting somebody's business to produce product for them will be tied to you meeting certain standards and, and audit scores very commonly are one of those things that they're looking at. Right. I've sat across the table from the owner of a company that said, if we don't get a good score on this audit next week, um, we could lose this contract that's worth $56 million yeah. annually. So, it's so I mean, and that was, yeah. that was probably 20 years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, what is the, you know, what is the it's potential the loss? What is the potential loss to a business in a scenario like that if they have, you know, a poor score on an audit and f due to the pest management mm -hmm. program, whether it's because they have, Pest issues, or even just the documentation, the record keeping. Uh, you know, the standards are very, very strict on what they're what they're looking for. Um, if you get a bad score on that, just that pest management portion of an audit, how much potentially could that cost? Could that cost a business? Yeah. Uh, you know, like and so when you look at when you look at it in that manner, yeah. um, for those types of facilities, the last thing you should be thinking about when you're talking to to companies that you may be considering using to do that service for you, the absolute last thing you should be thinking about is what it costs. Mm. Because 
you know, there are a lot of companies out there. There are a lot of small companies out there, and there are a lot of good small companies out there. I'm not going to sit here and bash our competitors. Um, but there are a lot of companies that, that may not understand those requirements, that may not have mm -hmm. the, the depth in, in their companies to be able to know how to really address and resolve these issues in a, in a timely manner that may not have the resources that those types of facilities need. Mm -hmm. um, you really need to look at all of that. Um, the American Institute of Baking does a lot of, uh, does a lot of food safety audits mm -hmm. uh, in these types of facilities. It actually just came out recently um, with some guidelines for those, those types of facilities in selecting a pest management company. And, they, and they, they clearly say, the last thing you should be considering is cost. Yeah. You should be looking for somebody that, you, you need to look for a pest management company that will partner with you, that right. you have a relationship with, that knows your facility, that knows, that, that knows what those standards are, the, right. that type of thing. Um. Don joined us, Don Hart. I wondered well, where he Don. was. So he was probably confused. He thinks it's Monday. Hi, yeah. well, happy Monday, Don. <laughs> He's like, what, what, what? <laughs> um, what types of businesses can you help? Any, you, any that you can't? Are there any businesses that we can't help? No, I would say, I would say there are no businesses that we cannot help, Don. It doesn't matter if it's the smallest mom and pop store. Um, you know, up to you know the the hospitals, the uh, the the, the large audited facilities. Um, yeah, we service some very very large hospitals, healthcare facilities. Um, it, you know, um, yeah, there really isn't there really there really isn't um, there really isn't a business that we can't that can't benefit from from uh, from our services. It seems like it's a spectrum in a way. Like I, it sounded like the audited facilities seem to understand the importance and significance um, more um, keenly than perhaps a smaller business to some degree yes. because yes. They, because of those requirements and yep. audits that you know that that are mandated um, in order to protect their you know their industry and their business. But um, you know, in the smaller smaller businesses or uh, different types of businesses, I could even say, um, depending probably on whether or not they've run into an issue in the past, may or may not have that same kind of understanding of the influence. Yeah, you know, I think uh, certainly, certainly, I think um, the larger facilities, the food handling facilities, even the small ones, you, you know, when I talk food handling, to me, mm -hmm. you know, the local pizza shop is a food handling facility. Yeah. Um, Certainly, I think those those types of businesses probably understand the importance and the value of of having you know an effective, efficient pest management program more so than than maybe you know the person that has an has an office space or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, having having pest issues, whether it's rodents or or uh, you know insects, um, you know ants, roaches, um, you know. Bed bugs, yeah. Bed bugs now are not scared. uncommon. Are, are not certainly not unheard of for places like movie theaters to have bed bugs, office buildings to have bed bugs. Um, you know, so. But that's a whole other topic that we can get yes, into. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but you know, day. just but just as an example of yeah. why why you know having a an ongoing proactive instead of reactive pest management program is so important. All right. Well, a couple more questions before we wrap things up here. Um, now, here's a good question even that I think business owners might ask is, should I try to, to get rid of rodents myself? I would not recommend it. You know, if you have a most that just happen to get in and you set a snap trap and catch it, you may take care of it. But, you know, to really be effective at resolving a pest issue, you need to understand the pest habits and the biologies and, mm -hmm. and you know, where they, where, where they live and what they feed on and why are they there and identify, you know, how are they, how are they getting in? Are there structural deficiencies that are allowing them to get in and, and those sorts of things? Um, 
there really is a science to this. Mm-hmm. It really is. It really is a science. And I think you know because there are so many over-the-counter products available that a lot of people do have that perception. Well, I can just go to you know mm-hmm. the big box store and 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 buy this this stuff. Um, it's really not as simple as that. It's really it, when you hire a pest management company, what you're really hiring is you're paying us. You're paying us for our for our knowledge, for our experience, for our understanding of those uh, of not just how to control the rodent, but you know why is the rodent there? What can be changed to make it less attractive for the rodent? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you you're hiring us based on you know our expertise. Anybody can go to you know, anybody can go to Sears and buy a set of Craftsman tools. It does not make you a mechanic. It does not make you qualified <laughs> to fix it. It does not make you qualified to fix the brakes on your car that you're going to put your family in right. and be driving down the highway. Um, and it's kind of similar. You can, go to, you can go to one of those big box stores and you can buy all kinds of materials and devices that are designed to control rodents. But if you don't have the knowledge and the understanding and the expertise on how to use those, um, are you going to be successful doing it? And are you going to do it in a safe manner? Yeah. You know, right. there's all kinds of rodenticides on the market that you can buy. And, you know, for the general public that doesn't understand what a rodenticide is, a rodenticide is, is, is a bait type of material that, that, depending on the product, works in different ways to, to, to kill that rodent. Um, there are, it's, it's poison. Mm-hmm. It's, it's rat poison. Um, there are a lot of risks to using those products if you don't use them properly. Mm-hmm. They need to be placed out properly. They need to be managed. They need to be, you know, they need to be used properly, like any type of a poison. Yeah, you um, I saw a video. I saw. I saw. I saw a video very recently um, uh, from a television show where an individual was making a recommendation about putting decon pellets inside of a soda can and sticking it in your in your garden. Yes. Um, I could see where that, that could go bad. That is, um, you know, I understand the concept behind that because you don't put it just out there where it's where it's open because because the weather's going to affect it. But that actually that actually is illegal. Mm-hmm. That actually is a violation of federal law to do that because there are restrictions on these products, even for the even for the homeowner. If you go buy this to use in your house, Danielle, that mm-hmm. label is the law, and and that recommendation this individual was making, well intentioned, was still recommending that people do something that was illegal, and it's potentially putting non-target animals, um, pets, children, children yeah, at, at risk of expo- yeah. of exposure to those products and and yeah, potential yeah. harmful side effects. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's those types of reasons why you really need to be dealing with, with, you know, somebody that is a licensed, insured professional. Great point, because, you know, you could go on YouTube and see that video and that recommendation and think, yeah, that's a great idea, I'm going to just do that. And then, and then you, then you, yeah, you know, your cat, your dog, um, the neighbor's dog, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, and you know, uh, God forbid, somebody's children get into that. Somebody's children get into that. You know, I mean, there are very strict rules, um, label directions on what you can and can't do, how you can use those products. You know, where you can use them, different inside than outside, and all those different things that that really are there for a reason, and they are there to protect the public. They're there to protect those non-target animals and children and pets. That's, that's why those rules exist. That's why, um, you know, our industry is quite heavily regulated, and it's because of those, it's because of those reasons. These mm-hmm. products potentially can be, can be you know, harmful, um, in some cases potentially fatal, depending on what the, pro- what the materials are. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's not something that should be. Not it's not something. Everyone. No, not at all. It's, not at all. But yeah. you do hear the. You know, you do hear the horror stories of you know, um, people fumigating buildings with uh, and a fumigant is a toxic yeah, gas yeah. that will absolutely yeah. that will absolutely kill anything if it if it has respiration it will kill it will kill a houseplant it will kill vegetation. 
uh, and you hear the horror stories occasionally in the news about you know uh, people being sick or, or, or dying from exposure to those types of to those types of products. There was a case last year in Texas where uh, I think there were three or four family members that actually passed away from a homeowner um, using a material to try to kill rodents that were underneath the house. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the product getting, you know, because it's airborne, getting into the, into the structure and actually, uh, and actually cost several people their lives. So, yeah, I'm not trying to scare, I'm not trying to scare anybody. But, you know, there are those, the, those potentials. Mm -hmm. Most of the over-counter products that you're going to go to the store, if you do decide to try to do it yourself, yeah, there's probably, you should not be buying any product that hazardous over the counter. Um, but, but those things do happen. They do happen occasionally. And, you know, it's certainly tragic for the people involved when that occurs. Mm. So, and I think you've went into this a little bit, but what can uh, an individual, you know, business owner expect from a rodent service? Well, yeah, and we did kind of talk about that. You know, num number one, the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to be inspecting. We're going to be inspecting and assessing the situation and, and evaluating, do you have a rodent problem? What type of rodent is it that we're dealing with? Um, why are they there? What are the conducive conditions that, that have attracted them? Why are, they, why are they there? And, you know, what is the best most effective means of solving that problem in as timely a manner as possible. And I've seen situations where it has taken sometimes, you know, I think of this, um, this farm in uh, northern Massachusetts where it took us months to control the rat population because it had been, had been building for, for, for years and years and years. Um, so, you know. Yeah, when it takes that long to create a, a, an issue or a problem, it can take. Yeah, it's not always an instant fix. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah, you know, and I know I've said this before. You know, um, you're dealing with living organisms. It's not like dealing with the plumber who comes to your home. Your sink's dripping, and you know they 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 repair it, and and when they leave, it's fixed. Um, this is much more to me. Pest management is much more closely related to the medical field. It's a matter of you know, prescribing a treatment, a treatment plan, and it, it sometimes takes time, just like with, you know, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, yeah, take this, take, get this prescription filled, take this twice a day for the next 10 days and you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, come back and see me. Right. So we're constantly evaluating those programs of what we're doing too, and we're constantly looking at you know, um, are we using the best tools available and, mm -hmm. and the most up-to-date um, current technology? And we may have some very interesting technology things coming in the, uh, in the future um, related to rodent control, too, that awesome. I'm not at liberty to talk too much about today. So. Just a little teaser. <laughs> More to come soon, hopefully. So. Well, fantastic. I think you answered a lot of questions and really kind of broke things down for, for business owners who may have a fresh new perspective on why preventative room control is, is necessary. So thank you. And if anybody has additional questions, you can go ahead and chime in here and we'll answer them um, later as you post them. Or you can just visit our website again, which is modernpest.com and go ahead and like and share this post. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Danielle. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Mm.